Hey everybody, this is Brian with Obedia, and in this exclusive video today, I'm going to show you a couple more of the cool new features in Steinberg's Cubase 6.5 digital audio workstation. Uh, a couple of cool features we're going to talk about, namely the brand new Audio Warp Quantize panel, uh, which is now built into Cubase 6.5, and we will also mention the brand new SoundCloud integration uh, in Cubase 6.5. So let's dive in and show these uh, great new features to you guys. So one of the big new features is the ability to quantize audio as if we were quantizing MIDI. And uh, if you are someone who has always wanted to be able to apply many of the same operations to audio as you are used to applying to MIDI notes, you now are going to be able to do that in Cubase 6.5. And you can do that by making use of the brand new Audio Warp Quantize panel that we have access to in Cubase 6.5. Cubase 6.5 now fuses the hit point and audio warp system together and uh, it embeds warp quantizing directly into this new quantize panel. And uh, so basically we can create warp markers directly from hit points when we, when we warp a piece of audio inside of Cubase and we can warp uh, audio loops, we can warp our entire arrangement, all of this can be done non-destructively and we can do this all just as if we were working with MIDI parts, which is really, really cool. So all of this is accessed up here in the top right-hand corner of uh, Cubase. Right here we have this quantize panel, and here we have quick access to being able to engage our audio warp quantize, our iterative quantize, and being able to choose the preset which we would like to use. So this is the resolution at which we would like to quantize our audio. You see we have a lot of different options to choose from here. But if we really want to get in depth, we can click this little corner button right here and this is going to open up the quantize panel. Now when the quantize panel opens up, we have a number of different controls uh, which we have access to. In the bottom left hand corner right here, we have the iterative quantize mode. And we can turn that on or off and we can make changes to how this is going to work in percentage by simply dragging our mouse up or down right here. What iterative quantize mode is going to do is essentially it's going to apply a loose uh, quantize method to the audio or the MIDI that we're working with. It means that your audio or your MIDI is going to move only part of the way to the closest quantize grid position. So it's not going to be as rigid as what you might get if you were not applying iterative quantize. So this is kind of nice for being able to keep things a little bit more human, essentially. And then as we move over, we have the audio warp quantize on or off button. So if this is engaged, obviously we're going to engage audio warp quantize. And then just to the right of that, we have the MIDI CC button, which will move our MIDI controllers when we choose to quantize. And moving on up, we have our grid, and our grid is going to show us, of course, a graphical representation of the quantize mode that we're working with. So from this pull-down menu right here, we can choose a quantize resolution method that we would like to make use of. And again, you can see this goes all the way from the very basic at whole notes going all the way up to 64th dotted notes. So it gets very, very complex, and that means that you can apply all of these methods based on the type of audio that you might be working with. And of course, if you don't like any of the presets, you can make changes uh, to the grid, the swing, and all of the other different options that you have right here in the center of the quantize panel. So it's really easy to dive in and make these changes uh, using the quantize panel because all we have to essentially do is decide what kind of quantize method we would like to apply to our audio and then simply apply it. So I have just a simple drum loop right here. So it's already been audio warped because I have musical mode engaged on it when I brought it into my Cubase project. In my audio pool, I engaged the option for musical mode on it, which means that it's going to keep in time with my Cubase project and it's going to be warped to fit into my bars and beats and various things like that. But if I want to quantize this audio a little further and have some fun with it, make some changes, things like that, I can simply go right up here in my quantize panel and choose a setting which I'd like to make use of. Now because this is a pretty basic loop, a lot of these settings aren't going to make 
too much of a difference, but let's go ahead and try quarter note triplets because that is probably going to create a sound that you're going to be able to hear a difference from. So I've selected quarter note triplet. I have my audio warp feature turned on. I'm using some iterative quantize right here, and I'm just going to hit the quantize button. So now you can see that immediately my waveform has actually changed. So let's see what it sounds like. So there you go. My audio has now been quantized to quarter note triplets. So this is really cool because this means that I can take even a really basic loop and by applying my quantize method to it, I can immediately change this into a totally different loop and I can do it all with one button press. Now, if I don't like the quantize method, which I've just applied, I can simply click on the reset button right down here and immediately my audio will be reset to its previous quantize setting. So all I need to do, as you can see, is just simply choose the quantize method, which I would like to make use of. My grid will immediately give me a visible representation of the kind of quantize I'm going to be applying, and then I just simply need to click on the quantize button. And again, as you can see, in some cases, I'm going to see a more drastic change to my audio, and in others, it's going to be a little less noticeable. So this is really cool because, again, this is the kind of operation that typically we've only been able to use on MIDI notes. Uh, and that's always been great for MIDI notes because it can fix our performances and it can also be a cool uh, effect to use and various things like that. But now you can apply this to audio in Cubase 6.5 and this is a really powerful feature. And because now hit points and audio warp are all integrated into the quantize panel, it's very, very easy to access all in one quick and easy to use panel in Cubase 6.5. So I really like this and you know it's going to be very fun to make use of in different productions to fix timing or of course to use as a fun effect on a loop or a piece of recorded audio. Now another big announcement in Cubase 6.5 is the integration of SoundCloud export into uh, Cubase 6.5. This is a pretty cool new feature. Uh, SoundCloud has of course been getting more and more popular over time lately in the digital audio community. Great way to share your music with others and Cubase has integrated uh, the ability to upload your music directly to SoundCloud from Cubase and it's real easy to do. Uh, all we have to do is click on the file menu and scroll down and we're going to go to export and audio mix down. Now in the audio mix down panel uh, I have a number of different options right here, but if I click right down here in the bottom section under post process, you're going to notice I have the option to upload to SoundCloud. Now when I click on that and then I proceed to click export, I'm going to be asked to connect to my SoundCloud account and enter my information so that I can easily upload my audio to my SoundCloud account. So this is just a really cool way to be able to very quickly disseminate your audio, your new project, your new creations out onto the internet. Get them onto SoundCloud where there is a quickly growing community of audio creatives and show off your work, which is a really cool new option in Cubase 6.5. Final thing worth mentioning in Cubase 6.5 is in, again, in the export panel here under file format, we now have the option to export to FLAC. Um, FLAC means free lossless audio codec. And uh, it's very similar to MP3, except it's lossless. Uh, the thing about MP3 is that MP3 actually compresses your audio, and therefore your audio loses definition. It loses quality when you export to MP3. Um, FLAC is being accepted uh, much more readily in the digital audio community as of late because it will cause for your audio to be uh, usually 50 to 60 percent of its original size but it won't lose as much quality as it typically loses when you export to mp3 so flac integration is another great new feature in cubase 6.5 especially for those who need to be able to share their audio across the web through emails and various other sources but need to keep the size of their files in check. FLAC is a great way to do it because you're also going to be able to keep the quality of your 
your audio in check at the same time. So there you go, guys. That's just uh, a quick overview of some of the other cool new features in Cubase 6.5 from Steinberg. Uh, definitely check out our other videos about Cubase 6.5 and the new features that have been introduced. There's a lot of very cool new ones. And I hope that they're useful to you guys. If you're a Cubase user, this upgrade is available to you now. If you're brand new coming into Cubase, you're getting all these great new features uh, diving into the world of Cubase right now. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and found it useful. As always, please stay in touch with me. My email address is brian at obedia.com. Get me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash obedia tutor. And of course, on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash obedia tutor. Keep in touch with me. And please give us a call and find out how you can work directly with an audio pro like myself and get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software. We will help you to tame your technology, which is what we do best here at Obedia. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Take care.